Here's the important part. And I'm, we're going to keep it low so you can hear it. It's as simple as this. If you believe that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins, not just some of them, but all of them, all of our sins, even the people we hate, he died for their sins too. Fact of the matter is, he died for Charlie Manson as well as he died for me. The question is, will you accept him as your savior? And it's as simple as this, you believe that he is the son of God, that he died for your sins, that he has the power to forgive you, and that he rose on the third day. And then quite honestly, you're in. It's that simple. I'd like to give you some big long speech, but that's not the way this is. We're gonna do one more verse, and I'm gonna ask anybody who wants to accept Christ as their savior to come forward tonight. My time has come, I'm slowly fading, and I deserve all I receive. Jesus, when you are in your kingdom, would you please, please remember me? Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for these people that came forth to accept your son as their savior. 
And Lord, we just love you so much and we thank you and we know that if you did nothing else, it would be enough. Thank you for your son. Thank you for his sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. in the pickup band. Bobby Schneider, come up here a minute, man. Hurry up. You guys see, turn around. This is the new movement shirt. You guys see the new movement shirt? Yeah. You guys want 10 of these? Yeah. You want 10 shirts? Yeah. Okay, I need you to go right now to the top of my Facebook page. I need 50 shares, 50, and I'll give away 10 of these next week. For anybody that wants one, Jessica's got free Bibles for everybody that came forth tonight. We got Bibles for everybody that came forth tonight as well. Thank you. Everybody that came forward or was baptized tonight, come over here and get you a Bible as well. Amen. I need 50, 50 shares, 50 shares, okay? Get your little phones out. I'm in phase one. I ain't got no phone. <laughs> That's the greatest, man. Baptized, picking up Bibles. I don't know about you guys, but God's here. Amen. I mean, I just know it, I see it, I experience it, I feel it. How many people was baptized, Jeff? Was it 12? How many? 13, 13 people baptized in one night. Yeah. We keep up this pace, so it'll be 500 this year, right? We're giving away 20 Bibles, baptized 13 people. Sounds like we're rewriting the book of Acts. Yes. <laughs> Amen, guys. Are you guys ready? Amen. I have a very special guest that pastors 4th Avenue United Methodist Church over here. Um, I, I, I'm just going to tell him, though, look, the guy ain't Methodist at all. Man, he's full gospel. I don't, I don't, he's, he's the most full gospel Methodist I ever met. He believes in the power of God. Um, he believes in the movement of God. And listen to this. He loves recovery. He is passionate about us in recovery. Like Pastor Jeff and Jimmy J, like this guy is for real about recovery. He loves helping us get our lives back. Would you guys give me a big round of applause for Pastor Ross Thornton? Man, Rocky, you're right. That light is bright up here. Woo! Man, I never thought I'd see that for myself. I need one. Hey, can we pray together tonight? Would you bow your head for a word of prayer? Whew. Heavenly Father, how amazing are you? It is so amazing, Father, that no matter where we've been and what we've done, we are never too far from you. Never too far from your love, your grace, your kindness, your mercy, your long suffering. Lord, that your word says when we were at our darkest, when we were at our worst, when we wandered far, far away, you were there with open arms. Lord, that you were coming after us with your love before we ever came after you. Lord, tonight my prayer is that your love, your power would hit every person here and that, Lord, they would not think about the people, the names of the people that spoke tonight, Lord, but the only thought we would leave this place with is your name, the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Yay, God. Woo. Woo. It is good to be here tonight. I've got 30 minutes. I just started at Rocky, so we're on the clock. I've got this far to run. It's going to be fun tonight, guys. I want to be real honest with you guys. I was the least likely in my class to ever be a pastor. I actually had a state police officer told my mom I would be anything but that. But because of God today, that same state police officers came to me and said, hey, could you help me with recovery? Could you help me with this? And I'm not bragging about me, it's all God. Man, if we don't get this, if we make this gospel about us, if we make this gospel about getting things or what God can do for us, we've completely missed it. 
This whole thing is about God. It's about knowing him. How amazing is it that you and I that have wandered way down the wrong path can still know God? I tell you, I was drugged to church for 12 years of my life. I quit going because my mom, well, she wasn't strong enough to drag me anymore. But my problem with church is when I really started getting into trouble like most of us have, anybody else ever been in trouble? I needed the church to be a safe place I could run to, but it was the place I came to one Sunday morning and I saw more rules to follow and I couldn't keep the few I already had. I saw it was about the clothes you had to wear. And I just thought, man, I would like to be that person singing that song with my life together, but I just don't. So my picture of the gospel was God could never love me. He could never want anything to do with me. So I guess I'll go find something else to live for. We've all went down that path. I'm talking about living for what you weren't created for. I'm talking about living for all the wrong things instead of the right things. I'm just gonna be honest with you. The truth is we were all created to be addicted. We've just been addicted to the wrong thing. The good news is today I'm addicted to him. And I've always been crazy and I'm still a little crazy, but now I'm crazy about Jesus. Now I have a reason to be marked as crazy. Didn't they say things about Jesus? I'm gonna tell you a quick story because this was my picture of the church growing up and then I'm gonna tell you another story to tell you how it really is. There was a homeless man in active addiction about 19 years old sleeping under the bridge and he woke up one Sunday morning and it was cold. So he said, hey, heck, I might as well go to church this morning. At least it's warm there. So he walked in the doors. He was carrying his backpack. Everybody has a backpack. And he walked in the doors and he was hoping he could get a seat in the back. Would you guys believe it? There was only one empty row in the whole church and you know right where it was. Where was the church? The front row. So here he is. Man, I don't know about this. I was gonna sneak out early. But it's warm in the sanctuary. So he comes on down to the front row and he listens to the sermon about about how anybody could be loved by God. Anybody was loved by God. Everyone was someone that Jesus died for. Man, what if everyone believed that? And he thought, man, could that be true about me? And then when the service was over, the pastor came down to talk to him and he was hoping that pastor was gonna tell him that that was true. But the pastor actually said, sir, next time you come to my church, you need to ask God what you should wear. Okay, okay, I'll ask him. So next week comes up and he ain't got any other clothes. I mean, he's living under the bridge. His backpack's got a couple essentials in it, but he says, I'm gonna go anyways. It was a good message and it was warm. And he comes back and he sets down. He even came earlier and you would guess where he had to sit the next week. Front row. Front row. Believe it. I think we'd wanna sit on the front row. This time the preacher doesn't even preach. He just comes right over. He said, young man, I thought I told you when you come to this church, you need to ask God what you should wear. That young man in addiction said, I did, I asked God. The preacher said, what? What did God say? God said he wouldn't know, he's never been to your church. Because any church that marginalizes someone based on what they're wearing or where they've been and if they're in active addiction or if they're this or if they're that has completely missed the simplicity of the gospel that they just spoke about. The simplicity of the gospel is no one is too far from our Father who loves us. Our Father loves us so much, He sent His one and only Son that whosoever would believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Aren't you glad the good news of John 3, 16, before anybody accuses me of not reading from the Bible, that's in the Bible, John 3, 16. He only asked us to do one thing, and I thought it was a bunch of rules. I thought it was wear the right clothes and be really good at home and sing the songs right and do all these things, and I thought, I'd already messed it up, so I might as well go the wrong way. But the good news is, God doesn't care about the to-do list and the rules. There's only one thing he asks you to do, one thing, and that is believe. Believe that he loves you because he does. Believe that he loves you and that he sent his son to die for you while you were yet a sinner. And believe that on the third day his son rose again. I was telling a guy in the gym this week, I go to the gym, I love to go to the gym. I can bench more than this guy, I don't care what he says. But we don't go to the gym to lift weights anymore. We go to the gym to tell people about Jesus. We do both. <laughs> But I was in there and I was telling this guy, man, I just want you to know that God loves you. 
And I, I can just see it on your face. You don't realize that God loves you, man. He's crazy about you. I mean, if you don't believe me, I can tell you, man, he sent his son to die for you. And the guy was telling me, oh, not me, never me, never me. Not me, somebody else. I'm like, man, all you gotta do is believe that. He's like, well, that's easy for you to believe. You're one of those superstar Christians. I was like, what? There's no superstar Christians. There's only believers. Do we have any believers in here? Do we have any believers in here? I'm talking about believing that every single person was made in God's image, Genesis. Every single person was formed by God. Every single person is someone that God created, someone that God loves, someone who God sent his son Jesus to die for in their darkest hour. And all you have to do is come home. All you have to do is believe he will accept you because he will. If you were the only person that would ever believe, he still would have died for you. That's the simplicity of the gospel. And the problem as a kid is I didn't see people that lived what they believed. If you believe this, you'll live differently, I'm telling you. If you really believe this, you'll live differently. And I'm saying the good news is I'm not gonna give you a rule sheet if you really believe this. I'm not gonna muster any, you're not gonna muster up the strength to do it because you can't do it based on what you have. Let me tell you the craziest good news that I found right in this, right in there. I asked the kid, I said, do you know where God lives? You can probably guess the answer. Oh, up, way up far in heaven. Way up there, way, way far away. Can I tell you what my Bible says? God could live anywhere. In the biggest castle, in the biggest houses, everything is his, it's all his. But let me tell you where God lives. God lives in me. If you believe, God comes and makes his home inside of you. Woo! That's something to run around about. I'm not allowed to run around. So if there's somebody in here that wants to run, run for me. God lives inside of us. That's different. There's something different before God lived inside of you. Before God lived inside of you, you were dead. That's what the Bible teaches. And now you are alive. There is something different about something that is dead and something that is alive. Thank God today, because I don't deserve to be alive. Thank God that the gun jammed. Thank God that none of the things I did killed me. Thank God today that I am alive. Yeah. I've been born again. I was something that I was not created for. I was living the wrong way. I was really, really lost. And here's where I tell you I found Jesus, but I didn't. He found me. In my darkest hour, he came to me and he's coming to you tonight with his arms wide open saying, I love you. I love you as you are and not as you should be because none of us are as we should be. The great Brennan Manning understood that after years and years of battling. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. I mean, that's the good news. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. He loves you, period. I'm telling you that it's got to go beyond just hearing those words and saying, yeah, I believe that. There's a difference between you saying, yes, I know God loves me and letting God love you. When you let your father love you, everything changes. When you listen to who he says you are, I'm gonna read one more scripture, but first I'm gonna tell the back end of the story. So I told you what the church shouldn't look like. And that's because the church is a place for everyone. The church is a safe place where everyone is welcome with open arms. Everyone is someone that God created. Everyone is someone that Jesus loves and everyone is someone Jesus died for. So the church is not like that story I told you about the guy that was not welcome. The church is a place where everyone is welcome and the church is not a place you ever have to run from. It's always a place you can run to. That's good news. That is good news, yay God. We don't have to run from him. He is not mad at you. I heard that too many times. God's mad at you. God's mad at you. He's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. He sent his son. He sent his son not just to get you to heaven one day. Because we, we preach that. Come forward and, and give your life to Christ just in case you die one day. Well, we're all gonna die one day. Or I heard the gospel preached. I'm just gonna call it like I see it. I heard the gospel preached last week, come to God so you can get this, 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 this. No, you come to God for one reason, to get God. Amen. And he's enough. Yeah. And he is a father and he will provide, I'm telling you what. 
but you come to God to get God. You come to God to know him. I'm just a believer. Do we believe? I'm not talking about Sunday morning Christianity. I'm talking about everywhere you go, everything you're doing, there is a reason you're on this planet. You were created to shine. There was an evangelist in Los Angeles and it was three in the morning. He had to preach at 10. On Sunday morning, it was three in the morning, which was technically Sunday morning, but I call it Saturday for the sake of the story. And he went in a 24-7 IHOP. Anybody else like 24-7 IHOP? And there was a group of gang members in there having dinner. And he was sitting down with his Red Bull, his coffee. You know, preachers run on two things, faith and caffeine. Oh, come on, don't act like you don't get it. Every single one of you had energy drink when you walked in tonight. And he came in to study. He opened the Bible and he kept overhearing these gang members. And one of the gang members told the other gang member, he said, it's my birthday and nobody's ever celebrated my birthday with me. And his friends laughed at him. Ha, 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 what do you want us to do? Throw you a birthday party at IHOP? And the preacher was there looking at his notes and he, he had nothing to preach the next day. He was kind of like me. They asked me what the scripture was tonight. I'm like, I don't know. God hasn't told me yet. <laughs> but the preacher, he just clicked in his head. He looked out the window and there was a Walmart across the street. So he got up, he left his stuff, told the waitress to be right back, ran across the Walmart, bought a birthday cake, ran back in, sit it down right in front of the gang members. He said, happy birthday. I heard you never had a birthday party. This guy was like, whoa, why are you doing this for me? He's like, well, can I just pray with you too? So he grabbed hands of these gang members in the middle of IHOP and he prayed some prayer like this. Father, we have all made mistakes. We have all sinned against you. We have all fell short of the glory of God, but you love us. You created us. You sent your son to die for us. We were created for so much more than this. And I just pray through this birthday cake that these individuals I'm praying with would know that they are loved. They are not what they claim to be tonight, but they are who they should be if they would just give their lives to you. Amen. The guy said, well, two things, preacher. Number one, I don't wanna cut this birthday cake. I wanna save it because I've never had a birthday cake before. Number two, that offer sounded pretty good. I'd like to give my life to Jesus. And three of the four gang members gave their lives to Christ in IHOP. Yeah. Woo! That is awesome. And then they left, happy as could be. Of course, he told them to go to the local church. He told them to find, find the movement on Monday nights at 7.30. <laughs> Monday nights, every Monday at 7.30 right here. And then he was left alone with that waitress. And that waitress said, sir, I would have never guessed you were a preacher. He's like, you wouldn't have had a Bible right here. It's like, I would have never guessed it. What kind of church do you go to? Believe. Yes, a believing church. He said, well, the best way I can answer that question without confusing you, because we made it real confusing, is I pastor a church that throws birthday parties for gang members at three in the morning. That's the good news. That's the gospel. It's calling people to believe. To believe. That's the church. Everywhere we go, we have the opportunity to share the love of Christ with someone that may not know that God loves them, to may not know that they were created for so much more than what they're living for. Man, they think that they're so far down the wrong path, there is no turning back. They think it, trust me, I talk to them everywhere I go on the streets. No, man, just let me tell you where I've been and I promise you, God wouldn't want me. He wouldn't care about me if you only know what I've done. Man, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you've done if you knew what Christ has done for you. Man, he paid for it. Past, present, and future was nailed to the cross for you. He gave it all so that you might live. He gave his life so that you can have life. Amen. He said, well, I don't want my own life. I said, good, you weren't created for yourself. You were created for him, so give your life to him. Because I've done it, I've lived for me. Look, man, I, I can tell you, I don't have enough time on my, top, on my timer tonight to tell you where I've been and what I've done. I've went way down the wrong path. So have so many people here. But the good news, they talked about it tonight. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done or what anybody says about you. If you would just come and believe God accepts you 
full. He doesn't even wanna hear the rest. He says that once you believe, your sins are gone as far as the east is from the west. And some, I, I told a guy that this week, I said, well, I just, I just can't believe that. Believe it, it's the truth. You've been, leaving, you've been believing a lie for far too long. Believe the truth. Believe the gospel. I mean, this whole Bible, it wouldn't matter what scripture I picked. I told five or six guys, just pick one. You just pick one because it's the same from the beginning to the end. It's we mess up really bad starting in the garden. We mess up all the way through and guess what God does? God fixes it. God loves us so he fixes it and God makes a way. He has found the solution and the only solution is giving your life to him. That's it, believing that he is who he says he is. But I, I don't wanna finish there. I don't wanna finish there. That's why I wanna read you one verse and then we'll, we'll wind down. When I say one verse, it could be a whole book. My 30 minutes is in slow motion tonight. My wife puts, writes me these little love letters on uh, envelopes and they're pretty good page holders. I'm just gonna read that instead. Her love letter to me says, I will love you forever. Nothing could change my love for you. XO, XO heart. And you know the cool thing is she lives with me. <laughs> and I'm not easy to love. But that can be written from God to you and it would be the exact same and it'd be true. And I'm reading this love letter not to give my wife, get some brownie points at home, although I'm sure she's watching, I'm sure I did. I'm reading this to tell you, this is a love letter from God. And the problem is, we're not opening it up and reading the pages of it because it's God pouring his heart out for you and me on every page from beginning to end. In Colossians 1 tonight, starting in verse six, this is the wonderful message that is being spread everywhere, powerfully changing hearts through the earth, just like it has changed you. Every believer of this good news bears the fruit of eternal life as they experience the reality of God's grace. Wow. Verse nine, since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of God's pleasure over your lives, making you reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness pleasing God in every good thing you do. Then you'll become fruit-bearing branches, yielding to his life and maturing in the rich experience of knowing God in his fullness. And we pray, and I pray this for you tonight, that you would be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his magnificent glory, filling you with great hope. Your hearts can soar with joyful gratitude when you think of how God made you worthy to receive the glorious inheritance freely given to us by living in the light. He has rescued us completely from the tyrannical rule of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom realm of his beloved son. For in the son, all our sins are canceled and we have the release of redemption through Jesus's blood. Woo! Two more verses. Even though you were once distant from him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, he reconciled you to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body as the sin offering on your behalf so that you could dwell in his presence. And now there is nothing between you and Father God, for he sees you as holy, flawless, and restored. If indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon, never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. And this is the glorious news I've preached all over the world. See, I don't want you just to give your life to Christ and, and, and be saved. That's, that's the absolute place to start. The good news is, you don't start eternal life when you die. You start eternal life the day you're born again, the day you say yes and give your life to Jesus. I'm talking about when I was young and you were young, we thought we were immortal. We thought nothing could touch us. And the good news is if you're a believer, now it's true. Hey, Jesus taught it in John. He taught this true to them. He said, if you die and you have believed with me, you believed in me, even if you die, you shall live. And those who believe in me never really die. 
I'm talking about you can't kill me. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's what the Bible teaches. Whew. I'm talking about you no longer have to live in the sin you've lived in for too long. You can be set free. Now, I am not saying you don't need a program. Look, let me stop that right now. Jesus put his disciples through a three-year program. Quit thinking you're gonna be done in three months. Hey, and after three years, after three years, he's gonna give me, he gave me 10 more minutes on my clock now. If after three years, one of them still sold him out with a kiss and didn't get it, and they were with Jesus being discipled. I'm saying you are no longer a no good, worthless addict that the world says you are. You're not just recovered. Once you believe, you are a child of God. It no longer matters what anyone else says. Period, it's settled in heaven, there's no more record of it. But you still need accountability and you still need a program. You still need somebody to disciple you. You still need to go to your discipleship meetings. You still need to be at the movement. But you are not who you used to be. You've been born again. And I want you to understand this because if you get this, you'll live different, you'll be different. The Bible talks about the renewing of your mind. You need your mind renewed so you can live and walk as a child of God. I don't want you just to say, well, you know, I'm just this no good and I'll never stop messing up. Look, I'm not saying that you're perfect, but you are in his eyes. But I'm saying that God lives in you now and it's gonna be a lot easier. Isn't that step one of the program, understanding and believing there's a God? What if you understood and believed in the God who wants to come and live inside of you? That would be some power. Whew. I'm gonna talk about the power real quick. One last story and I've got about five minutes on my clock. I don't know if that's right. I'm, talk about, I'm talking about you have the power to live and walk like Jesus more and more every day. You're becoming more like him. You wanna know what God's like? He's love. If your theology is teaching you anything but love, check your theology. God is love, it's in there. I'm talking about, we didn't have this power before, but I'm talking about you have the power to walk in the gym and tell a guy, look him in the eyes and say, man, God loves you and he wants you to know that. And look, they don't all say, yes, I wanna be saved. I wish it was that easy. Because the last guy said, I'm gonna knock you out if you tell me that one more time. I thought about that for a minute. One more time, I want you to know, sir, that God loves you. I thought I told you I was gonna punch you out. You can punch me out and that won't change a thing. I'll get up right off the ground with blood in my mouth and let you know God loves you. It doesn't change a thing. That's what it means to be a believer. Take no account of a suffered wrong. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. It's about knowing him and following him. And if you do those things, you're gonna be in a good place. It's what it means to be a believer. When someone else gets a bad report, we don't let what happens in our day shake us anymore. I used to, man, I was stressed out and hated life all the time. I was always worried about the next problem, the next thing. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter how your day went. If you know him, what's it really matter? What does it really matter? You can wake up every day and realize you're on this planet to shine. You're on this planet to represent Jesus. The majority of people in America in Huntington are not opening the Bible. You've heard this quote, I don't know who said it. The only Bible they're reading is you. What are they seeing? Because I grew up as a kid and I saw people that said they were Christians and I'm sure the majority of them were, but I think they just missed the living for Jesus, the taking up their cross and following him. I just can't find it. I gotta be honest, I can't find it. Hey, would you give your life to Jesus, come to church on Sundays and then do everything else like you always did? I can't find it. I needed somebody to live like Jesus in front of me. Jesus didn't say to Peter when he was on the boat, hey, would you follow me, take up your cross and follow me? Peter didn't say, well, I'll tell people I believe in you and stay in the boat and you just go on. It's a call to go with Jesus. It's a call to give your life to him, to make him the most important thing in your life. Anything else, man, it's, it's still empty. I'm talking about we tried to fill that hole in our hearts with everything in the world, and it can only be filled by God. People need to see this in us. They need to see believers that live what they believe. I didn't see that growing up. I think if I did, I wouldn't have wanted to go the places that I went. I wouldn't have looked to move in with gang members when I was 18 years old for something fun. Because I grew up thinking Christianity was boring. 
when the truth is I was just doing it wrong. It's the greatest adventure I've ever been on and I've been on a lot of the adventures you guys have been on. It is a great adventure living for him because it's not about me or you, it's all about him. It's about in the face of your day, representing Jesus and loving like him in front of every person you ever meet. It's about letting people know they no longer have to lay in that ditch alone anymore. There is a hand and you're ready to extend it. You're ready to tell them how much they are loved by God. You're ready to walk with them along the way. You're ready to disciple them. You're ready to show them how to live as a believer. You're ready to show them how to live as a believer. And how does a believer live? He lives out what he believes. Are we living out what we believe with the power inside of us? They're gonna say we're crazy. They said Jesus was crazy. They called him every name in the book. Who cares what they say? You keep believing. And for the guy there that's saying, well, I, I can't believe God loves me because this happened and this happened and this happened and why did God let this? Look, man, we're asking the wrong questions. The people that asked Jesus questions were trying to trip him up. I don't need to answer your question, why did God allow this, this, this to happen? I know God loves you because in the darkest hour, no matter what you were doing and what you did, he sent his son. His son gave his life for you when you were at your worst. He died for you. He looked down upon that cross as the nails you put there were being put in and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is love. And that is what we're called to do. And we are called to believe because we're believers. Do I have any believers in this room? And what do believers do? We live what we believe. And nothing that happens to us or around us or the circumstances of our day, if we have everything or we have nothing, it doesn't change a thing because we know him. And he lives in me and he knows me and he says I'm his son and I'm believing that. And that's all I need. Father, right now as we close this service out, I thank you tonight, Lord, that there are some misconceptions in this room about what it means to believe. Lord, the simplicity of the gospel is simple. We simply need to believe, God, that you created us, you loved us so much that no matter how far away we were, you sent your son to die for us, to pay the penalty of our sins. And he rose again on the third day. And Lord, there's a lot of people in here The man, I don't know. I don't know if they've repeated a prayer one day or they've came to altars or what they've done, but there's a lot of people in here that are still living for the wrong thing, that are still addicted to the wrong thing. And Lord, there's some people that are no longer addicted and think they are and they need to understand recovery and who they are in you. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. There's some people that need to come forward tonight to lay everything down, to surrender, to give their entire lives to you like you gave your entire life for us. There's some people in here that need some spiritual healing because they have been hurt by the church like I have and they need to know that you love them. They need to experience your power and your love tonight. There are people in this room that have an ailment in their body and they need to be healed tonight. And God, we believe that you haven't changed. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, we are here tonight because you're here and we're believers. So right now I'm believing that anybody in this room that wants to give their life to you, that wants to be physically healed, spiritually healed, that has anything they wanna lay down, that right now you're giving them the faith to step up from the pew and where they're at, to run down here at this altar and for them to cry out to you, God, right now, Lord, on the count of three. Jump them up from where they are, give them the faith to stand and say, I believe, and God is gonna take care of me. Right now, if that's you, if you wanna give your life to Jesus, you need some kind of healing, you need to surrender it, whatever it is, Come on, right now, one, two, three. Come on, get down here, come on, come on, come on. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Do you believe? Come and believe. I'm gonna just start praying with you guys. Father God, you know every need, Lord. I'm praying, Lord, as I go around and touch each of these men as they kneel before you, God, that whatever they need right now, Lord, according to your will, Lord, we ask and you say it is done. We believe, Lord, right now that every person that's knelt down that wants to surrender is saying, God, I give it all to you. I give it all to you, God, right now. I lay everything down. I lay it down right now, right now. I give myself to you. They're saying right now, God, I believe that you sent your son to die for me. 
I believe that he rose again. I believe that I'm your child. I believe in physical and spiritual healing in my body. I believe that I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna live what I believe because God is inside of me, because my broken heart is being made whole. God, I thank you right now that each person at this altar crying out to you is receiving your power and your love, that your arms are wrapping around them, Lord, that they're hearing in their head. They're not what the devil is saying, Lord. The devil is a liar from the beginning and we believe you, God. You say, Lord, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For anyone who believes, Lord, they are your children that their sins are remembered no more, gone from the far as the east is to the west. May the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside them, Lord, right now, right now, Lord, give them the power to believe it's true. And it is done right now on earth as it is in heaven. Every person in this room right now wants you to say these words with me three times. I believe. I I believe. I believe. I love you guys, but I want you to know tonight that God loves you more. If you, before you leave this room, I'm gonna let Rocky close this out. If you want someone to personally pray, I will stand here all night long and I will pray with every person in this room if you want it. Because I remember the people that did that for me. I remember the Rockies that picked me up out of the gutter and helped me get on the path I'm on. I'm here for you. If you need prayer, I'd love to do that. If we gotta do outside, we'll do it. I love you guys. Rocky, it's yours. What do you guys, give it up one more time for Pastor Ross Thornton. You guys be blessed as we leave here tonight. Be safe and we'll see you next Monday.